don't think you have anything to worry about, Charlie Brown. After all, a person's character isn't really established until he's at least five years old. But I am five. I'm more than five. Oh well, that's the way it goes. The only thing wrong with my big brother Charlie Brown is his lack of confidence. His inferiority and his lack of confidence. His clumsiness, his inferiority and his lack of confidence. His stupidity, his clumsiness, his inferiority and his lack of confidence. Did you know that Charlie Brown has never pitched a winning baseball game? Never been able to keep a kite in the air? Never won a game of checkers? And never successfully punted a football? Sometimes I marvel his consistency. I think Charlie Brown has nice hands. It's truly a dog's life, filled with many challenges. You try acting excited when that round-headed kid comes home from school. Now, Linus, I want you to take a good look at Charlie Brown's face. Would you please hold still a moment, Charlie Brown? I want Linus to study your face. Now, this is what you call... A failure face. Notice how it has failure written all over it. Study it carefully. You rarely see such a good example. Notice the deep lines, the dull, vacant look in his eyes. Yes, I would say this is one of the finest examples of a failure face that you're liable to see for a long while. Some days I wake up early to watch the sunrise and I think how beautiful it is and how my life lies before me. And I get a very positive feeling about things. Like this morning, for instance. The sky is so clear and the sun is so bright. How can anything go wrong on a day like this? I'm late!
is my report on the past. The past has always interested people. I must admit, however, that I don't know much about it. I wasn't here when it happened. I think lunchtime is about the worst time of day for me. Always having to sit here alone. Of course, sometimes mornings aren't so great either. Waking up and wondering if anyone would really miss me if I never got out of bed. Then there's the night too. Lying there and thinking about all the stupid things I've done during the day. And all those hours in between. When I do those stupid things. Well, lunchtime is among the worst times of day for me. Well, I guess I'd better see what I've got. Peanut butter. Some psychiatrists say that people who eat peanut butter sandwiches are lonely. I guess they're right. And when you're really lonely, the peanut butter sticks to the roof of your mouth. Boy, the PTA sure did a good job of painting these benches. There's that cute little red-headed girl eating her lunch over there. I wonder what she would do if I went over and asked if I could sit and have lunch with her. She'd probably laugh right in my face. It's hard on a face when it gets laughed in. There's an empty place next to her on the bench. There's no reason why I couldn't just go over and sit there. I could do that right now. All I have to do is stand up. I'm standing up. I'm sitting down. I'm a coward. I'm so much of a coward, she wouldn't even think of looking at me. She hardly ever does look at me. I can't remember her ever looking at me. Why shouldn't she look at me? Is there any reason in the whole world why she shouldn't look at me? Is she so great and I'm so small she can't spare one little moment? She's looking at me. She's looking at me. No, Sally. You're thinking that other dress I wore, I wore at Lucinda's party. The one I'm talking about was the light blue one and had a design embroidered around the waist. I don't remember. <laughs> Something like this. And the skirt went out like this and had these big puffy sleeves and a sash like this. Oh, yes, I remember. Yes, well, that was a dress I was wearing last week when Lucinda was telling me that she saw one just like it over at the mall. Lunchtime is about the worst times of the day for me. If that little red-haired girl sees me with this stupid bag on my head, she must think I'm the biggest fool alive. But if she isn't looking, then maybe I could take it off quickly and she'd never notice it. On the other hand, I can't tell whether she's looking or not until I take it off. But if I never take it off, then I'll never have to know whether she was looking or not. On the other hand, it's very hard to breathe in here. She's not looking at me. I wonder why she never looks at me. Do you know something, Schroeder? Just imagine what would 
Never try to discuss marriage with a musician. Happiness is a fleeting thing, Sally, but I think that a man can really come closer to it by directing the forces of his life towards a single goal that he believes in. And I think that a man's personal search for happiness is not really a selfish thing either, because by achieving happiness himself, he can help others to find it. Does that make sense to you? We had spaghetti at our house three times this week. You know, a princess sort of thing. A white dress and nice slippers and... A big ballroom. But I guess that's sort of silly, isn't it, Charlie Brown? No. Oh, no. I mean, well... We all have our little daydreams or ambitions or whatever you want to call them. I mean, I've had one myself for years, but I've never told anyone. What, Charlie Brown? You can tell me. Oh, no. It's not the sort of thing I should tell. No, I don't think I should. Oh, come on. I won't give it away. Come on. Please? Well, I've always wanted to be called Flash. I hate the name Charlie. I like to be real athletic and have everybody call me Flash. I like to be so good at everything that all around school, I'd be known as Flash and... <laughs> hey, Frida, listen to this! What's the matter, Sally? Well, I don't know. I was jumping rope, everything was all right and... Suddenly, it all seems so futile. Beethoven used to be so fond of taking long walks in the country. He was always so inspired by the beautiful music of the countryside. You fucking come back here with that ball! Beethoven had it nice. I think I'm losing my flavor. Hey, Snoopy, we're home from school. Woof, woof, woof. Hi there, fella. Gosh, it's so good to see you. Oh, Snoopy, you're so adorable. All right, Snoopy, get back on your doghouse. I'll be out later with your supper. I think Snoopy's such a wonderful dog. Me too. He's just about the best there is. Like me, I think they're swell. Isn't it remarkable how things turn out so well? Pleasant day, pretty sky, life goes on. Here I I win no more. 
the sofa help him grow from here? Hmm. Let me see. Where was I? Oh, that's right. <laughs> the pretty sky. Not bad. Not bad at all. Cozy home. Bored and bred, sturdy roof beneath my head. Not bad, not bad at all. Not bad. Not bad at all. I wonder if it's new tonight. I think I'll just walk right up to that little red-headed girl and introduce myself. I think I'll introduce myself, and then I think I'll ask her to come over here and sit next to me. I think I'll ask her to sit by me, and then I think I'll tell her how much I've always admired her. I think I'll flap my arms and fly to the moon! Yesterday, I was a dog. Today, I'm a dog. Tomorrow, I'll probably still be a dog. There's just so little hope of advancement. Today's April Fool's Day, Charlie Brown. I think I'll play a little trick on you. I think I'll try a little trick. You understand what I'm saying, don't you? You understand this is April Fool's Day? You're sure? I want to be certain you understand. Okay. Charlie Brown, guess what? That little runner girl is over there and she wants to give you a hug and a kiss. Really? Wow, this is fantastic! April Fools! Just like shooting fish in a barrel. Snoopy, do you see the stick? I, the human being, will throw the stick and you, the dog, will retrieve it. I, the dog, could not be less interested. I got it! I got it! You give me back my blanket. No, I'm gonna wanna keep it. It's just all you need to break this disgusting habit. Apparently, you have read the latest scientific reports. A blanket is as important to a child as a hobby is to an adult. Many a man spent his time restoring antique automobiles, or building model trains, or collecting old telephones, or even studying about the Civil War. This is called playing with the past. Really? Certainly, and this is good, for it helps these men to cope with their everyday problems. Now, I feel it's going to be absolutely necessary for me to get my blanket back, so I'm just going to give it a good <gasps> yank. It's surprising what you can accomplish with a little smooth talking and fast action. without a blanket is like eating a cone without ice cream. My blanket and me. Guys, guys, come here. You've got to see this. Look at my little baby brother, Yannis, with his little blankie. There's your little baby brother with this silly little blanket. Well, you know how babies are with their blankets. What do you mean? It's a cozy sanctuary, but it's far from necessary, because I'm just as self-reliant as before. As a simple 
demonstration of my independence station. I will go away and leave it on the floor. Yes, I'll walk away and leave it. Though I know you won't believe it, I'll just go away and leave it on the floor. La 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 Don't ever make me do that again. You're a hopeless case, Linus. It's my blanket and me. Linus, do you know what I intend? I intend to be queen. When I grew up, I'm going to be the biggest queen there ever was. And I'll live in a big palace with a big front lawn and I have lots of beautiful dresses to wear and my coach to all the people. I'll go away even though I'm scared of them. Lucy, I believe queen is an inherited title. Yes, I'm quite sure. A person can only become a queen by being born to a royal family of the correct lineage so that she can assume a throne after the death of the reigning monarch. I can't think of any possible way that you could ever become a queen. Sorry, Lucy, but it's true. And in the summertime, I'll go to my summer palace and I'll wear my crown and swimming and everything. And all the people will cheer and I will shout at them. What do you mean I can't be queen? It's true. There must be a loophole. This sort of thing always has a loophole. Nobody should be kept from being queen if she wants to be one. It's undemocratic. Good grief. It's usually just a matter of knowing the right people. I bet a few pieces of well-placed correspondence and I get to be queen in no time. I think I'll watch television. I know what I'll do. If I can't be queen, then I'll be very rich and I'll work and work until I'm very rich and then I'll buy myself a queendom. Good grief. Yes, I will buy myself a queendom and then I'll take out the old queen and dug over the whole operation myself. I'll be head queen. Okay, switch channels. Are you kidding? I'm not one of your royal subjects. What makes you think you can come right in here and take over? These five fingers. Individually, they do nothing. But when I curl them together, into a single unit, they make him a fighting force. Terrible to behold. Yes, Your Majesty. Supper time? Not yet. Supper time? Not yet. A C. A C. I got a C on my coat hanger sculpture? How could anyone get a C in a coat hanger sculpture? May I ask a question? Was I judged on the piece of the sculpture itself? If so, is it not true that time alone could judge a work of art? Or was I judged on my talent? If so, is it not right that I be judged on a part of life over which I have no control? If I was judged on my effort, then I was judged unfairly, for I tried as hard as I could. Was I judged on what I had learned about this project? If so, then were not you, my teacher, also being judged on your ability to transmit your knowledge to me? Are you willing to share my C? Perhaps I was being judged on the quality of the cohanger itself, out of which my creation was made. Now, is this not also unfair? Am I to be judged by the quality of cohangers that are used by our dry cleaning establishment that return our garments? Is this not the responsibility of my parents? Should they not share my C? <laughs> Thank you, Miss Othmar. The squeaky wheel gets the grease. How are you today, Sally? I'm mad. I'm mad at the whole world. Are you mad at everybody in the whole world? I'm mad at everybody. 
Are you mad at all the animals and the birds and the fish? How about all the trees and the flowers? I'm mad at them too. I'm mad at everything. Are you mad at the sky and the stars? Are you mad at the ground? Are you mad at all the rocks? How about all the cars and the buildings and the circuses? Are you mad at the bracelets and the roller skates? You didn't mention jump ropes. Are you mad at jump ropes? I'm especially mad at stupid jump ropes. This is for you, Lucy. Happy Valentine's Day. That doesn't sound right. Here, Lucy, this is for you. Happy Valentine's Day. You can do it if you just don't get nervous. This is for you, Lucy. Happy Valentine's Day. Okay, take it easy, you can do it. This is for you, Lucy. Merry Christmas. Ah! I'd give anything if that little red-haired girl sent me a valentine. Oh, Lucy, I'm so depressed. Everything is going wrong. I don't know what to do. I'm sorry to hear that, Charlie Brown. Maybe there's something I can do to help. I think what you need most of all is to come right out and admit all the things that are wrong with you. Do you really think that will help, Lucy? Certainly. All right, I'll try. I'm not very handsome or clever or lucid. I've always been stupid at spelling and numbers. I've never been much playing football or baseball or stickball or checkers or marbles or ping pong. I'm usually awful at parties and dances. I stand like a stick or I cough or I laugh or I don't bring a present or I spill the ice cream or I get so depressed that I stand and I scream. How could there possibly be one small person as thoroughly, totally, utterly flawed? For a starter. A starter? Certainly. You don't think that mentioning these few superficial failings is going to do you any good, do you? Why, Charlie Brown, you really have to down. You're stupid, self-centered, and moody. I'm moody. You're terribly dull to be with. Yes, I am. And nobody likes me, not Frida, or Shermie, or Linus, or Schroeder. Or Lucy. Or Lucy. Or Snoopy. Or Snoop. Now wait a minute, Snoopy likes me. He only pretends to like you because you feed him. That doesn't count. Or Snoopy. Oh, why was I born just to be one small person that's thoroughly, totally, utterly? Wait! You're not very much of a person. That's certain. And yet there is a reason for hope. There's hope. For although you are no good at music like Schroeder, or happy like Snoopy, or lovely like me, you have the distinction to be. No one else but the singular, remarkable, unique Charlie Brown. I'm me. worth Charlie Brown you're you gosh Lucy you know something I'm beginning to feel better already you're a true friend Lucy that'll be five cents please I couldn't decide if I wanted to try fudge marble chocolate rocky road vanilla or butter pecan I finally decided to try fudge marble then, I had to choose between a sugar cone or a plain cone. I chose a sugar cone. So what happened? I went out the door and dropped the whole thing on the sidewalk. Don't tell me my life isn't a Shakespearean tragedy. Today is my grandfather's birthday. How old is he? 63. It's hard to believe he was once a human being. Why is it I always have my supper in the red dish and my drinking water in the yellow dish? One of these days, I'm going to have my supper in the yellow dish and my drinking water in the red dish. Life is just too short not to live it up a little. Schroeder, do piano players make a lot of money? Money? Who cares about money? This is art, you blockhead. This is great music I'm playing, and playing great music is an art. Do you hear me? An art! Art, 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 art! You fascinate me. What? What? What?
and hand him the news. We got a holiday that he can't refuse. A day of harmony, a day of music. Beethoven's birthday. Beethoven day? A reverential mission. Beethoven day? The hope of each musician. No more am I the only guy to stand up and say, Hooray, Beethoven, hooray. Beethoven day? As in Ludwig von Beethoven, composer born 1770-1827, the eldest of three sons, Ludwig's mother, was the daughter of the chief overseer of the kitchen at the palace of Ehrenbreitstein. Whatever! Schroeder, I just want you to know I'm on your side. I want to help you publicity-wise with Beethoven's birthday. After all, this is a really big thing. Thanks for your support, but I just don't want to see Beethoven's birthday commercialized. Commercialized? Yes, the next thing you know they'll be wearing Beethoven t-shirts! Beethoven day! If you're wondering now how do we start, just put the music till you know it by heart. We're gonna celebrate, we'll have a party. Beethoven's birthday. Beethoven day. And when you say the title. Beethoven day. You'll hear a great recital. The right of every boy and girl to stand up and say, Hooray, Beethoven, hooray. Beethoven day. Beethoven day. Beethoven day. Beethoven Day, 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 We'll build a Beethoven theme park! We could have a bake sale! Wait! That's too commercial! Let's imagine it That glorious hour Filled with emotion Yet inspired with power When we all honor The man we adore on the day we place the newest face on Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore. Beethoven Day. A moment of reflection. Beethoven Day. Book report on Peter Rabbit. Peter Rabbit. Peter Rabbit. Rabbit. Peter Rabbit is a stupid book about a stupid rabbit who says that to bolts of other people's gardens. 83 to go. The name of the book about which this book report is about is Peter Rabbit, which is about this rabbit. I found it very. I like the part where it was a. It reminded me of Robin Hood And the part where little John Jumper rocked to the sheriff of Nottingham's back And then Robin and everyone swung to the trees in a sudden surprise attack And they captured the sheriff and all of his goods And they carried him back to the camp in the woods And the sheriff was guessing their dinner at all But he wriggled away and he sounded the call His men rushed in and the arrows flew Peter Rabbit did sort of that kind of thing too the other people's name was McGregor. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Oh. 
and examining a work such as Peter Rabbit. It is important that the superficial characteristics of its deceptively simple plot should not be allowed to blind the reader to the more substantial fabric of its deeper motivations. In this report, I plan to discuss the sociological implications of family pressures so great as to drive an otherwise moral rabbit to perform acts of thievery which he consciously knew were against the law. I also hope to explore the personalities of Mr. McGregor and his conflicting roles as farmer and humanitarian. Peter Rabbit is established from the start as a benevolent hero, and it is only with the increase of social pressure that the seams of his moral fabric If I start writing now when I'm not really rested, it could upset my thinking, which is no good at all. I'll get a first start tomorrow when it's not due till Wednesday, so I'll have all of Tuesday unless something should happen. Why does this always happen? I should be outside playing, getting fresh air and sunshine. I work best under pressure, and there'll be lots of pressure. If I wait till tomorrow, I should start writing now. But if I start writing now, when I'm not really rested, it could upset my thinking, which is no good at all. The name of the rabbit was Peter. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, ha! Down came the staff on his head, smash! And Robin fell like a sack full of lead, crash! The sheriff laughed and he left him for dead, ah! But he was wrong. The five, the six, the seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty. Just then, an arrow flew in. Wing! It was a sign for the fight to begin. Zing! And then he looked like the sheriff could win. Ah! But not for long. Away they ran. Just like rabbits who run a lot, as you can tell from this story of Peter Rabbit, which this report is about. Rabbits, 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 chasing rabbits. How do they expect us to write a book report? They were back to all the end of the world. In just two days. Such as carrots and spinach and onions and lettuce and turnips and parsley and okra and cabbage and green beans and horses and tomatoes, potatoes, asparagus, mention the extreme pressure exerted on him by his deeply rooted rivalry with Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail. Rabbit is a stupid book about a stupid rabbit who's a nut jumble from other people's gardens. Peter Rabbit, 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 and at 4.95, the very, very, very end. Amen. A book D report on Peter Rabbit. Peter Rabbit, just a rabbit. rabbit. You can't do anything to get to start. Rabbit, 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 rabbit. I haven't even started yet. World War I flying ace high over France in a stop with camel, searching for the infamous Red Baron. I must defeat him. Suddenly, the entire fire. Archie fire. Archie used to call. He burst beneath my plane. The Red Baron has spotted me. Nira, Nira, Nira! You can't hit me! Actually, tough flying aces never say, Nya, Nya. I just, uh, drat this fog. It's bad enough I have to fight the Red Baron without having to fly in weather like this. All right, Red Baron, where are you? You can't hide forever. Ah, the sun is looking through. I can see the woods of the Montsec below. And what is that? It's a Fokker triplane. Ha, I've got you this time, Red Baron. Ugh, he's diving out of the sun. He's tricked me again. I've got to run. Come on, Sopwith Camel. Go, go, Camel, go! I can't shake him. He's living my plane with bullets. Curse you, Red Baron! Curse you and your kind! Curse all the evil that causes all this unhappiness! He is the World War I flying ace back at the aerodrome in France. He is exhausted, and yet he does not sleep. The one thought continues to burn inside his mind. Someday, someday I'll get you, Red Baron. Oh yeah? That's what you think. 
Oh yeah, that's what you think. Oh yeah, that's what you think. Oh yeah, that's what you think. What? That's my new philosophy. Oh yeah, that's what you think. Why are you telling me? What? Why are you telling me? Why are you telling me? I like it! That's a good philosophy. Why are you telling me? Why are you telling me? Why are you telling me? My new philosophy That teacher gave a D on last week's homework She said, Miss Sally Brown Your grades are going down I could have told her Your new philosophy My new philosophy Miss B I'm she Look see a D, a D. Well, why are you telling me? And that's my new philosophy. That's your new philosophy. Why are you telling me? My new philosophy. That's great, Sally, but I gotta go practice Chopin's Nocturne in the B-flat minor. No! I like it. No! That's a good philosophy. No, no, no! That's your new philosophy, huh? Yes! Uh, I mean, no! Just like a busy bee, each new philosophy can fly from tree to tree and keep me moving. When life's a dizzy maze on alternating days, I choose a different phrase. Your new philosophy. My new philosophy. Sally. Some philosophies are simple. Man does not live by bread alone. Some philosophies are clear. Leave your message at the sound of the tone. Some philosophies pick and choose, deciding what goes in it. Some take a lifetime. Or take a minute. But Sally, anything that only takes one minute can be very lasting. For instance, Beethoven took over two years to complete his brilliant Ninth Symphony. No! I can't stand it. I can't stand it. I like it! It's like a guarantee, my new philosophy. And things are sure to be a whole lot brighter. Oh yeah, that's what you think. Why are you telling me? No, I can't stand it. But now life is free and easy. Much more philosophy, see you with my brand new. You know, someone has said that we should live each day as if we're the last day of our lives. Some philosophies aren't for all people. And that's my new philosophy. All right, gang, I want this game to be the biggest and best game of the season. I want everyone out there playing with everything he's got. Charlie Brown, I thought up a new strategy for you. Why don't you tell the other team we're gonna play at a certain place, only it isn't the real place. And then when they don't show up, we'll win by forfeit, see? Isn't that a good strategy? I don't understand these managers. They don't want to use good strategies. The thing we have to remember is spirit and teamwork. I'm sure if we all just grit our teeth and bear down, we can finish off this season with a... That other team was trash talking us, Charlie Brown. I got even with them. I said, you guys think you're so great? Mozart was writing symphonies when he was your age. That really shut him up. I'll bet it did. If we just grit our teeth and bear down, I'm sure we can finish off this season with... Perhaps you shouldn't be a playing manager, Charlie Brown. Perhaps you should be a bench manager. That's a good idea. You'd be a great bench manager, big brother. You could say, bench, do this, or bench, do that. You could even be in charge of where we put the bench. When we get to the playing field, you could say, let's put the bench here, or let's put the bench there. I can't stand it. What's the sense of our playing when we know we're gonna lose? It would make, if there was even a million to one chance we might win, it would make some sense. Yeah. yeah! There might not be a million to one chance, but I'm sure there's at least a billion to one chance. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Give me a T! T! Give me an E! E! Give me an A! A! Give me an M! M! What have you got? Team!
pal. You'll never guess what happened today at the baseball game. It's hard to believe what happened today at the baseball game. I was the manager, Schroeder was catcher, and all of the team was the same. As always, but somehow a rather disaster struck at the baseball game. Huddle up! Three balls, two strikes, the bases were loaded with two men out. I pitched my curve, but somehow he hit it a good, strong clout. Lucy, I hollered, it's coming right to you. She caught it as easy as pie, then dropped it. I don't think it's good for a team's morale to see their manager cry. Snoopy helped out by biting a runner and catching the ball in his teeth. Linus cut flies from a third story window by holding his blanket beneath. Yes, we had fortitude, no one could argue with that. And one run would win us the game as I came up to bat. Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown. Now, Charlie Brown, we're all behind you, sort of. I mean, this guy can't pitch. Hey, but he's like my grandmother, Charlie Brown. Now all you have to do is bear down. Just bear down. And when he gets the first, watch me for my signal. And the championship is ours. Two men were on with two outs and me with one strike to go. One strike. One strike. Then I saw her, this cute little red-headed girl I know. Firmly I vowed I would win it for her and I shouldered my bat and I swung. <gasps> Dear pen pal, I'm told where you live is really quite far. Would you please send directions on how I can get where you are? Your friend, Charlie. I'm sorry to have to say this right to your face, Lucy, but it's true. You're a very crabby person. And I know your crabbiness has probably become so natural to you by now that you probably don't even realize when you're being crabby, but it's true just the same. You're a very crabby person and you're crabby to just about everyone you meet. Now, I hope you don't mind me saying this, Lucy, and I hope you take it in the spirit that it's meant. I think we should all be open to any opportunity to learn more about ourselves. I think Socrates is very right when he said that the first lesson to anyone in life is know thyself. Well, I guess I've said enough. I hope I haven't offended you or anything. Well, what Socrates got to do with anything, huh? Who was she anyway? Did she ever get to be queen? Tell me, did she ever get to be queen? Did she ever get to be queen? Who was Socrates anyway? Know thyself. <laughs> hey, Snoopy, you want to help me get my arm back in shape? Now watch out for this one. It's a new fastball. Excuse me a moment, Charlie Brown, but I wonder if you'd mind answering a few questions for me. Certainly, Lucy. Well, the first question is, on a scale of 0 to 100, using a standard of 50 as average, 75 as above average, or 90 as exceptional, where do you rate me with regards to crappiness? Well, Lucy, I don't really... Your ballot need not be signed, and all answers will be held in strictest confidence. Well, still, Lucy, that's a very hard question to answer. You may have a few minutes to think it over if you want, or we can come back to that question later. I think I'd like to come back to it if you don't mind. The next question deals with certain character traits you may have observed. 
regarding personality. Would you say that I was A, forceful, B, pleasing, or C, objectionable? What would your answer be to that, Charlie Brown? What would your answer be to that, Charlie Brown? Hmm, Charlie Brown, hmm? Well, I guess I'd have to say forceful, Lucy, but I really don't think you're- Forceful, I see. Well, we'll make a check with your A then. The next question deals with my ability to get along with other people. Would you say that I was torn? Good or excellent? I think that depends a lot on what you mean by get along with other people. You know, make friends, sparkle in the crowd, that sort of thing. Do you have space for abstention? Certainly. We'll just make a check mark at none of the above. The next question deals with my physical appearance in referring to my beauty. Would you say that I was stunning, mysterious, or intoxicating? Gee, Lucy, you look just fine to me. Stunning! All right, Charlie Brown, I think we should get back to that first question. On a scale of 0 to 100, you think a standard of 50 is average, 75 I remember the question, Lucy. Well... 51? 51 is a crappiness rating for me! Very well then, that about does it. Thank you very much. Your cooperation has been greatly appreciated. It was a pleasure, pleasure Lucy. Anytime. Come on, Snoopy. Oh, wait, just one more question. What do you answer yes or no to the following? Is Lucy Van Pelt the sort of person you would like to have as president of your club or civic organization? Oh yes, by all means, Lucy. Yes, well, thank you very much. That about does it, I think. Well, who asked you? Now, that's 51. None of above. Shorter was right. I can already feel myself being filled with the glow of self-awareness. Oh, Sally, I'm glad you're here. I'm conducting a survey and I wonder if you would. 110 C, poor. None of the above. No. And what are you going to do about that dent you made in my bicycle? <sighs> oh, Linus, I'm glad you're here. I'm conducting a survey, and there are a few questions I'd like to ask you. Sure, go ahead. The first question is, on a scale of 0 to 100, using a standard of 50 as average, 75 as above average, or 90 as exceptional, where would you rate me with regards to crabbiness? You're my big sister. That's not the question. No, but that's the answer. Linus, answer the question. Look, Lucy, if I give any sort of an honest answer to that question, you're going to slug me. Linus, a survey that is not based on honest answers is like a house that is built on a foundation of sand. Would I be spending my time conducting this survey if I didn't expect complete candor in all the responses? I promise not to slug you. Now, what number would you give me as your crabbiness rating? 95. It's a woman's prerogative to change her mind. Now, why are these two columns there? And that is my answer. There, it's all done. Let's see what we've got. It's true. I'm a crabby person. I'm a very crabby person and everybody knows it. I've been spreading crabbiness everywhere I go. I'm a super crab. It's a wonder anyone will still talk to me. It's a wonder I have any friends at all or even associates. I've done nothing but spread unhappiness everywhere, I've, everywhere I go. I've done nothing but breed unhappiness and resentment. Where did I go wrong? How could I be so selfish? How could I? What's wrong, Lucy? Don't talk to me, Linus. I don't deserve to be spoken to. I don't deserve to breathe the air I breathe. I'm no good, Linus. I'm no good. That's not true, Lucy. Yes, it is. I'm no good. And there was no reason at all why I should still go on living on the face of this earth. Yes, there is. 
Name one. Just tell me one single reason why I should still deserve to go on living on this planet. Well, for one thing, you have a little brother who loves you. <laughs> Every now and then I say the right thing. <laughs> Hi, Linus. Where are you going? Lucy's teaching me Charlie Brown. She said her sister is responsible for the education of her little brother, so she's teaching me. Boy, is she intelligent. Come along, Linus. Do you see this tree? It is a fir tree. It's called a fir tree because it gives us fur for coats. It also gives us wool in the wintertime. I never knew that before, Lucy. That's very interesting. This is an elm tree. It's very little, but it will grow up into a giant tree and oak. You can tell how old it is by counting its leaves. Gosh, Lucy, that's fascinating. Now, wait a minute, Lucy. I don't mean to interfere, but... And way up there, those fluffy little white things. Those are clouds. They make the wind blow. And way down there, those tiny little black things. Those are bugs. They make the grass grow. Is that so? That's right. They run around all day long, tugging and tugging at each tiny seedling till it grows into a great tall blade of grass. Boy, that's amazing. Oh, good grief. This thing here, it's called a hydrant. They grow all over and no one seems to know just how a little thing like that gives so much water. Do you see that bird? It's called an eagle. But since it's little, it has another name, a sparrow. And on Christmas and Thanksgiving, we eat them. Lucy, how can you say that? I'm sorry, but I just can't stand idly by and listen to your wild way up there. showers and when it's cold and winter is upon us the snow comes up just like the flowers now lucy i know that's wrong snow doesn't come up it comes down after it comes up the wind blows it around so it looks like it's coming down but actually it comes out of the ground like grass it comes up charlie brown snow comes up oh good grief Lucy, why is Charlie Brown banging his head against that tree? To loosen the bark to make the tree go faster. Come along, Linus. Clouds can make the wind blow. Bugs can make the grass grow. So, there you go. There's a little known facts that now you know. My stomach clock just went off. It's supper time and Charlie Brown has forgotten to feed me. Here I lie, a withering hollow shell of a dog. And there sits my supper dish, empty. But that's all right, he'll remember. When no furry friend comes to greet him after school, then he'll remember. And he'll rush out here to the doghouse. But it'll be too late. There'll be nothing left but the dried carcass of his former friend who used to run and play so happily with him. Nothing left but the bleached bones of his loyal dog. Hey, Snoopy. Are you asleep or something? I've been standing here a whole minute with your supper. Supper time! Supper time! Behold the brimming bowl of neat and meal, which is brought forth to ease our hunger. Behold the flowing flag and moist and sweet, which has been so Okay, there's no need for a big production. Just get down off that doghouse and eat.
with the ice and snow. Summertime's nice with the place to go. A bedtime, overtime, halftime too, but they just can't hold a candle to my supper time. Oh yeah! Woo! <laughs> Woo! Bring on the hammer, bring on the butt. Poppy's little puppy loves it. Now wait a minute, Snoopy. Now cut that out! Why can't you eat your meal calmly and quietly like any other normal dog? So what's wrong with making mealtime a joyous occasion? Linus, it looks like an airplane to me the way it's blinking on and off. Schroeder, do you think that this is an airplane or a star? I believe that it is a star. But it, it could be a planet. It could be a satellite. Hmm. I wonder. Well, we'll never find out by just sitting here. Where are you going? Over here to get a closer look. I'd like to sit up here after supper and hear the sounds in the night. But something seems to be missing. Hmm. Ow! In my opinion, that's exactly what it needed. I'm so happy. That little red-haired girl dropped her pencil. It has teeth marks all over it. She nibbles her pencil. She's human! <sighs> Hasn't been such a bad day after all. Happiness is finding a pencil, pizza with sausage, telling the time. Happiness is learning to whistle, tying your shoe for the very first time.
You're a good man, Charlie Brown. You are kind to all the animals and every little bird. With a heart of gold, you believe what you're told. Every single solitary word. You bravely face adversity. Ice cream, knowing a secret, climbing a tree.